Welcome to this informative video about the death penalty. Today we're going to talk about three things. First, the facts. Second, the problem. And third, the solution. Now, all these sources I'm using, I've posted in the description link, and they will be able to be seen by you. Now, this is by Cornell Edu, a very reliable source on legal precedent, and they state in an overview of the death penalty, quote, Congress or any state legislature may prescribe the death penalty, also known as capital punishment, for murder and other capital crimes. The Supreme Court has ruled that the death penalty is not a per se violation of the Eighth Amendment. Now, the Eighth Amendment says, per se, about that there should be no um, unusual and cruel punishment. So it means that there should be just punishment for the accused. Uh, a ban on cruel and unusual punishment. But the Eighth Amendment does shape, shape certain procedural aspects regarding when a jury may use the death penalty and how it must be carried out. Because of the 14th Amendment due process clause, the Eighth Amendment applies against the state as well as the federal government. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff, and you can be able to look at it here, um, right here. Um, also, the Supreme Court has ruled that juveniles, kids under 18, are not able to receive the death penalty or people that are have suffered mental issues. Now, there's a problem with this because most people that commit heinous crimes have suffered from abuse, depression, other things that cause mental ills. Now, once I used to be in support of the death penalty and living in Massachusetts, when Jokar Sarnev was uh, given the death penalty, there was a feel of that justice had been served, that what he had done wrong and we ju put justice. But all these things were emotional. They are out of revenge and vengeance. Because this kid who had come from out of the United States, come here, gone to college, had been influenced because the teenage mind can be influenced that way, um, did a heinous crime. Yes, we should not uh, lower his punishment, but giving him lifer, behind him a lifer would be more just than doing what he did to other people. Now, that is another legal problem with the death penalty. The fact that you're doing to the person what they did to another person. If them killing, murdering someone is so heinous, what makes it okay to do it to them? Now, uh, the Death Penalty Information Center, somebody that gives you a lot of information, is a very um, stacked article, but it's very helpful, and I very encourage you, you to see it. Now, it has a great quote by the late judge, Charles Weltner of the Georgia Supreme Court, where it says, Everyone who believes that a person sentenced to life for murder will be w walking the streets in seven years. The only problem with that is those people that don't give, give the death penalty are usually given life without parole or life with parole after 25 years, which means they usually serve at least 25 years in prison. Now, this is very just for the person, not just killing them. Now, second, I want to deal with the moral problem. Now, Thomas Jefferson famously said in the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that are, they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, what I really want to focus on the fact is life. These are unalienable rights. It is wrong to take these rights away. But suddenly it's okay if somebody does it to them. Now, there is an idea of justice called... Uh, it's similar to retributive justice. It's called restitution, where the person is given exactly what they did. So if Bill stole Joe's cattle... He had to give Joe back his cattle. Like, Bill had to receive cattle and more cattle. The fact is, if somebody commits murder, it is not right to give restitution because restitution has been seen to be not a flawed 
criminal justice system. As we see here, that the world's top five executioners are China, who kill people that go against their communist thing, Iran, who can go who goes against human rights, Saudi Arabia, who can do the same, Iraq, a place with a lot of uncertainty, not a very stable place, but in fifth, a place that doesn't have any of those, the United States, that only kills them because that is what is emotionally okay to those citizens. Juries, though they're supposed to be impartial, especially in certain areas where a heinous crime has happened, there was a lot of emotion into changing the results that it appeases the jury's emotions. Now, there's a solution. Now, this article by James Gill again, now, it says, uh, punishment fails, rehabilitation works. It says the New York Times, where it says, quote, if any other institutions in America were unsuccessful in achieving their ostensible purpose as our prisoners are, we would shut them down tomorrow. Two-thirds of prisoners reoffend within three years of living prison, often with more serious and violent offense. But the thing I really want to focus on right now is the last paragraph, and this is the last article I show you. It says, my colleague Bandy Lee and I have shown that an intensive re-educational program with violent male offenders in San Francisco jails reduced the level of violence in the jail to zero for a year at a time. So we hear of times where people are attacked in prison with rehabilitation. This went all the way down to zero. Now, he continues, even more important, participation in this jail for as little as Four months reduced the frequency of violent reoffending after leaving the jail by 83% compared with a matched control group in a conventional jail. And in addition to enhancing public safety, this program saved the taxpayers $4 for every $1 spent. This is a lower reincarceration rate, save roughly $30,000 a year per person. <coughs> the only mystery is why is this program not being adopted by every jail and prison in the country? Why tax mayor not demanding that this be done? Now I want to review close that see that legal precedent may show that uh, death penalty is okay, but there's so many legal holes with how it's not okay for mental ill or juveniles, and then the fact that in the Declaration of Independence it goes distinctly against it, and in as we show again. The world's top five executioners. United States is number five in 2014. Something that really goes against what Thomas Jefferson said, that, that we are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now I want to remember you to save lives, not end them. That is what makes, Repu that what makes Republicans clearly pro-life, that we care for all lives, including the lives of inmates. Thank you. And I hope you make a movement to end the death penalty. Thank you.